Hi guys, today I'm gonna try another one of these Puerto Rican meals that my friend Carmen told me about. This one's called stuffed potato balls. It is so delicious. Yes, it takes a few steps to get to the end, but it's so worth it. You guys are gonna love this. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Alright guys, so you're going to need some pretty huge potatoes, kind of like this size right here. So I went out to the store and bought four like this because I don't usually buy huge potatoes like this. And um, at first Carmen was telling me that I had to boil them, you know, peel it, dice it, boil it, kind of like making mashed potatoes. But I tried it several times like that and it came out really, really awful. So what I'm doing is just boiling it in the skin like this as if we were making potato salad. And I don't want it to get too, too cooked or too soft. I just want like a serving fork when it, when it gets inserted in that it goes in pretty easily. And then I'm going to take it out, cool it down. We're going to peel the skin off and then we're going to go from there. Okay. In the meanwhile, we're going to move over to the stove because we have to get the meat cooked. And we have to get these potatoes cooked. The potatoes are clean. So now all I'm doing is setting them in this big pot and filling it with water and then setting it on top of the stove and let it cook for about 30 to 35 minutes thereabouts. We're going to use some lean ground beef, C93.7, because I don't want too much grease or gravy in this dish. I'm going to need some cornstarch in this cookie pan right here. I have my black pepper. We're going to need salt, of course, and chili powder, and an 8 ounce can of tomato sauce. And this is what I usually put when I make my ground beef for anything that I'm going to do. Okay, but you can put other spices that you like. Some onions and tomatoes diced up. And now I'm filling the magic bullet cup with some of the onions and tomatoes, put some of the tomato sauce, get it blended, and then I'm adding salt. And I usually start off with two teaspoons of salt and two teaspoons of black pepper, and then taste it, and then adjust accordingly. But usually that's enough for me. The chili powder, I usually put two, four, six, eight, ten. Just kidding. I, I don't usually put more than six teaspoons of the chili powder, and depending on who's coming to dinner, I may go ahead and put just four teaspoons. So I blend it again. Now over to the stove. It's time to get the ground beef going and this is only two pounds of ground beef and I'm using the potato masher because I want the ground beef to be really loose I don't want any of it to be clumped together because then it won't work well for this dish and so I just keep working at it see working hard clean off the potato masher now it's time to add my little puree here that I've made and I just kind of pour it all in at once see beautiful right and that's a lot of spices are in there already you probably don't need to add anything more so then Again with the potato masher. Don't ever stop with the potato masher because you want it loose. Add a little bit of water just so this can cook for a little bit. About 30-35 minutes this needs to cook for. And check the potato. See how easy this serving fork goes through. We don't want it too soft. Drain it in a colander because we want to get all the moisture off of the potatoes. And then when it's cooled just for a little bit until you can handle it, right? Just go ahead and peel it off. You probably don't even need the knife to peel it off. And then squish it. So this is going to be a more firmer potato than if you're doing mashed potatoes, all right? So just squish it all, put some elbow grease in it, and then now it's just time to add a little bit of the cornstarch, and I start off with one tablespoon, and I start off with one egg, and what I'm essentially doing here is making like a potato dough. So instead of doing a dough from flour, I'm doing it from potato. So I kind of get it worked in with a spoon at first, and um, just go ahead now and add a pinch of salt, a pinch or two. You can add more salt if you want, but you don't want this to be too salty because the meat is salty. See, look, see how you can make it into a ball, just like a dough? So now just kind of get it worked in. I only did that to show you how the ball will look. Work it in with my hands, put a little bit more cornstarch. So this is two tablespoons of cornstarch for those of you who are following. And just kind of work it like a dough, you know. And then now it goes into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, thereabouts. And the, the beef, not chicken, the beef is done. So now I pour it out into, into the colander because I want to go ahead and drain off all that gravy. And see, it wasn't a whole lot of gravy because this meat is very lean. And I've switched to the leaner meats now too because Joy is having a lot of issues with the greasier ones. Now the potato is ready. In this blue plate, I have some cornstarch. And you want to make a huge, huge ball. And then flatten it in the palm of your hand. And then you go ahead and add some meat and just add enough that you can fold it over really well. Take your time with it, okay? Don't rush. 
and then now I roll it in the cornstarch and I've discovered I don't like the feel of cornstarch it feels too smooth on my fingers I can't wait to be done with this <laughs> so then here comes another one it's already folded with the meat inside put the cornstarch I don't know that this is a dish that I'll do often because it's a lot of work and I don't like to touch the cornstarch so then here they all are I have a lot of meat left over I can make something else with this tomorrow and now into the fridge again it goes for another half hour and then in deep oil we want to go ahead and fry these potato balls and turn them you know after a few minutes to the next side see use your tongues to just go ahead and flip them over and the white stuff that's sitting on top is actually not the cornstarch it's the potato I think I kind of messed with those ones too quickly when I was turning them but it's still good you know there's nothing wrong with it so you want to go ahead and only put a few in at a time take them out as soon as they're done and then just keep loading the pan back with the rest that you have to make so we're getting quite a bit here and they're huge so see I'm putting in more don't burn yourself all right look at them gorgeous right beautiful fantastic look I cut this one for you guys see the meat don't forget to check out my website to purchase copies of any of the books go to bearpantryshow.com and click on the store tab so because I don't know what this dish is usually served with in the Puerto Rican community, I went ahead and served it with fried chicken. I mean, the potatoes are already fried. So I did fried chicken, the stuffed potato balls, and a wonderful garden salad. And take a look, see, two pieces can be a serving because they're huge. You know, this is something that you want to do sometimes. You want to do it all the time because it's fried and, oh, it's, it's a process. But this was really, really fantastic. I'm glad that Carmen kind of nudged me on to make these uh, Puerto Rican dishes. So I have the meat empanadas and now I have the stuffed potato ball. So as I plug away out of those books that she loaned me, we're gonna be trying more things, all right? So anyways, I wanna thank you guys as always for watching the show. Share it with your friends and family for me. Thank you so much for picking up my books and until I see you guys again, take care. For those of you who ask me how I light the kitchen to do the show, I usually have these lamps that I set right in front of the bar, but it got too tedious to set up all the time, so Joe put up this light fixture for me recently, and I put this shop lamp pinned it onto this bar stool, I hook it up to this surge protector, so I just flip a switch to turn on all the lights, and then I'm off doing my show, all I gotta do is set up my cameras.